the Gilda's maximum lawyers community of legal entrepreneurs who are taking their businesses and lives to the next level. As a Guild member, you'll build relationships, be held accountable, and learn strategies specifically designed to get you unstuck and accelerate your plan for growth. Members are also granted exclusive access to masterminds hosted around the country. Our next event is coming up, and we're heading to Scottsdale, Arizona. There's something truly magical about the power of these in-person connections where real-time breakthroughs happen. Picture this. You're surrounded by like-minded law firm owners tackling your business and mindset challenges together. The energy is electric, the insights are transformative, and the results are game-changing. Investing in yourself is the best decision you'll ever make. The knowledge, strategies, and breakthroughs you'll gain are priceless assets that will supercharge your practice and propel you forward. Join the Guild and secure your ticket to Scottsdale at the best possible price by visiting maxlawevents.com. But as a two-man firm, just like most of the folks who, who do the kind of work we do, we can't compete with the billboards and the TV attorneys, those big firms. So we really have shifted our marketing to social media, to the internet, to what I call grassroots. Run your law firm the right way. The right way. This is the Maximum Liar Podcast. Maximum Liar Podcast. Your hosts... Jim Hacking and Tyson Mutrix. Let's partner up and maximize your firm. Welcome to the show. Welcome back to the Maximum Lawyer Podcast. I'm Jim Hacking. And I'm Tyson Mutrix. We got a pretty damn awesome guest today. I'm, I'm pretty excited about the friend of the show. So uh, before we get to that, though, how you doing? I'm good. I just got back from Las Vegas. We went out and celebrated my parents' 50th wedding anniversary. They they got remarried in the chapel, and then Elvis showed up and played four or five songs. It was a total blast. <laughs> That's fantastic. So I didn't tell you I was going to do this. Are you in front of a computer? Yeah. All right. So I want you to Google Mutrix Finney Clayton. I want you to tell me, I want you to tell listeners how many Google reviews I have. And I'm only, I'm telling you right now, I'm doing this only to show that I have more than you now. I'm going to punch you in the face, but it looks like you have 187. That's right. That's right. So uh, you got some work to do. Anyway, do you want to introduce our guest? I'm so excited to have our guest on today. Although our listeners can't tell, I'm actually wearing pants. So it's that big of a show. Our friend Bernard Nomberg of the Nomberg Law Firm in Alabama is on the show. Bernard, thanks so much for being with us. Good morning, fellas. I appreciate you inviting me on. All right, Bernard. Just introduce yourself and tell them what you do and where you're located. Sure. I'm Bernard Nomberg. My brother David and I have the Nomberg Law Firm. We're located in Birmingham, Alabama. And our father, Joel, who's happily retired, is of counsel with us. So we like to say we have about 100 years of workers' comp experience representing folks throughout the state of Alabama. And I was Born in Baltimore, Maryland, but have grown up in, in the state of Alabama and happily lived in Birmingham uh, since the mid-90s. And Bernard, I know that you are an accomplished athlete. You played football at Vanderbilt University. You were the quarterback, isn't that right? I, I did play at Vanderbilt. I was one of the quarterbacks, but uh, yeah, I was I was on scholarship at Vanderbilt in the late in the late 80s. And Bernard, so talk to us a little bit about, were you destined to be a lawyer because of your dad? Was that something that you always thought you were going to do? It's funny because I have three sons, and one of them is really gung-ho to want to be a lawyer. So I'm wondering sort of what that was like for you as a young man thinking about going to law school. Jim, I, I too have two brothers. So there's three three brothers in our family, and we kind of all grew up in dad's law practice. And Dothan, our city uh, that we grew up in, is in the southeast corner of the state, just north of Tallahassee, Florida. And it's not a small, sleepy town anymore. There's probably 100,000 people in the county. But Dad was was a solo practitioner for many years doing workers' compensation, uh, employment-related cases, domestic relation cases, and the like. And just watching how he treated people and was able to fix their problems or at least make their situations a little bit better always struck a real a real chord with me and with my our youngest brother uh, David who's my law partner and I just enjoyed watching and seeing the difference he was making in the lives of others and that really planted the seed that ultimately led me to law school and, and practicing the way I am now. 
Bernard, you have something that I think is pretty cool. I watch it every once in a while. It's called Nomberg Law Live, and you have it linked on your website, too. Talk a little bit about what that is and, and how it helps your firm. Sure, sure. Actually, Jim was one of one of my guests a few months ago, and I appreciate Jim spending some time and coming on with me. It's a weekly show that we're run through uh, Facebook Live, and that's where we, we produce or put the show out. And every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Central, 8 a.m. Pacific, I bring on a different guest to talk about whatever is that is their specialty. One week it'll be lawyers or a lawyer. The next week it'll be a community leader. And I kind of rotate back and forth. You know, when you get two lawyers typically talking about a, a very specific area of the law, you kind of lose your, your audience. But I think it's important in that some of these areas are just so foreign to to the average uh, citizen who doesn't have any affiliations with the law, but doesn't it, may not realize, hey, I may need that type of a lawyer one day. And so I try to find those unique folks in the community. I've been fortunate to have a bunch of different people from different parts of the country uh, come on the show as as well. And we, we range from anywhere from 15 minutes to, to 45 minutes uh, per show. And it's been a lot of fun for me. It's been good success. It's good exposure for our firm. And I'm enjoying doing it. Bernard, how come you didn't just do a show about workers' compensation? What made you sort of think to branch out and sort of what was your mindset? Well, in a little bit different way, we put on our YouTube channel short excerpts about the law in video form. And I just thought that that would be a little too mundane for a, a live show. So we, we do house, it's, it's, I guess it would be considered a video audio book uh, on our YouTube channel about Alabama workers' comp law. But when David and I were planning this, this Nomberg Law live show, we just thought we needed to have a lot more variety than Bernard talking about Alabama work comp, snooze fest. But um, <laughs> so that's kind of where we got the ideas from. So I'm curious. I'm assuming you're partners with your brother, and that's how the firm's set up. How do you all make decisions when it comes to running the firm? That's a great question. Um, usually mom has to be called in to, to break the ties. No, I'm, I'm kidding. She actually <laughs> works next door to us. David is my youngest brother. We have a middle brother who lives up in Richmond. I like to say that Rob is the, the smartest of the three. He didn't go into the law. He's, he's a professor and does some other great things in, in the Richmond area. But David and I will meet... Gosh, we're we're around each other about 70 hours a week, it seems like. And, and our firm meetings are typically while we're working out at the Jewish Community Center or while we go get a quick bite to eat. We just kind of work through things. And we have a saying here at the office called, keep chopping wood. And what that means to us is, is we just figure out those things that work for us, and we just keep doing those things. And the keep chopping wood is, is was. Uh, the, an old story that I once heard about a fellow who that's all he did in life, but he was very, very good at it and loved it. And that, that made him happy and that fulfilled his life. And that's that's kind of where we are. Both of us, David and I both love what we do, enjoy helping uh, folks. We call in dad occasionally to get his advice on stuff, to keep him part of the firm. And we just keep chopping wood. Bernard, talk to us a little bit about marketing challenges in a town of 100,000. How do you stand out? Is there a lot of competition? And what have you and David done to sort of make the Nomberg Law Firm sort of bigger than life? David and I are, are based in Birmingham, and our practice is up here, and it's the biggest city in the state. And I think our metro area is more than a million. But, but Dad, his practice was down in Dothan, and that's where we grew up. And after he happily retired, when David and I were figuring out where we wanted to have our practice, we thought Birmingham was better suited for us, for our families. But I'll tell you, in a, in a town this big, the biggest uh, city in the state, they're really the folks who do the kind of work that we do, work comp, Social Security, and the like, we really have kind of a, a close-knit community, if you will, believe it or not. There is a lot of competition, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of cases out there and we have a real good camaraderie. We meet once a month, the plaintiff's side of our bench, and we share ideas, and, and we really get along very well. But as a two-man firm, just like most of the folks who, who do the kind of work we do, we can't compete with the billboards and the TV attorneys, those big firms. So we really have shifted our marketing 
to social media, to the internet, to what I call grassroots. David and I are on committees. Uh, we speak around the state quite often. David is, is an executive member of a couple of different organizations. I currently am the chair of the Alabama State Bar Work Comp section. So we really just try to get out and meet as many attorneys and establish relationships that we can with them. Uh, those are always our, our strongest feeds of, of potential new cases. But as, as part of the different organizations that, that you two are also a part of, we have really ramped up our social media efforts, Facebook, Twitter, all, all the social media platforms. We try to compete on those levels where we know we'd never, nor would we really want to ever compete on the billboards and the TV uh, ads of the world. Bernard, you seem to have embraced video, whether it's live video or recorded video, from looking at your social media, looking at your website, things like that. What advice would you give to attorneys that are in a similar position to you that have not quite adopted video yet? Well, it's, I'll repeat the advice that I got uh, from many lawyers who are ahead of me in this avenue is just start. Just practice. I, I did lots of offline videoing just to see what I sounded like and, and looked like. Well, there's not much to look at or, or to hear. I try to convey a good message, uh, whether it's talking about an area of the law or these on-the-trail videos that I do once a week that I shamelessly will admit I, I copied from our buddy Morris Lilienthal and from, from Jim's different videos that I've seen both of them do so very well, just trying to humanize who I am as a lawyer, because I think a lot of folks who, who don't deal with lawyers or, or around lawyers, they, they tend to be a little afraid to talk with them. And you, you just got to show that, you know, I'm just another guy just like them. I think that's such a great point, Bernard. I think that one of the best things about your Nomberg Live show is that, you know, you might ask questions of people, but it's really the interaction of you and the other guests that really shows who you are. And, and I think that just there's no substitute to letting people spend time with you, and whether it's audio or video, I think that's just great. Now, what kind of feedback have you gotten from people in Alabama and Birmingham or other people that see your shows or see your videos? What kind of feedback are you getting? It's certainly expanded our audience. It's certainly expanded our footprint in the state. But it's kind of cool when this winter I was at my, my kids, they both graduated from high school, but our school is in our our neighborhood, and I, I know a lot of the, the kids who are still playing on the sports teams and their parents, of course, and I'm at one of the games about 30 minutes from home, and one of the other team's parents stopped me and recognized me. He had watched one of the videos or one of the interviews that we had recently done to that time period about childhood athletes and concussions. And so we struck up a conversation for a minute or two. He asked me for my card and uh, made a new friend. So it's that, that kind of exposure has been pretty cool uh, to see how you know, folks find you. You put out some, some decent content that's interesting, and they just start to find you. All right, Bernard. So I'm going to ask you to think about your law practice for a second. And I want you to think about one thing you should stop doing and why and what's prevented you from stopping doing it. The one thing that we constantly do here in the office, David and I, is tweaking and hopefully somewhat perfecting all of our systems in the office. And I think I heard this from maybe John Fisher or one of the other masterminds, the guys who are just, what I say, ahead of me in doing all these things, is learning how to delegate those tasks that the lawyers in the office don't need to be doing, and that's why you hire assistants and other folks to do those things for you. So there are certain tasks in our office that we've stopped doing and delegating. We've delegated it to the others, the assistants, the paralegals, the secretaries in the office, so that we can continue focusing on client communications and, and negotiations and those types of what I'll call lawyer tasks. Bernard, what do you view as the things that you and David are best at doing? How does that play into how you divide up the work? And have you sat down and thought about the way to best use your time? Jim, we 
we follow the same concept that I did. <laughs> this is kind of funny, at least to me. The same way I used to figure out which of my two daughters got to sit in the front seat on a given day before they were driving. My older daughter got the odd days of the calendar month. And my younger daughter got the even days. Now, she quickly realized that she was missing out a day or two each month. But David and I delegate whichever new phone call or email that comes in with a new client, potential client, that's who gets that particular day. So even if we're out of town, even if we're in deposit, whatever it is, if today is the 23rd, today is David's day. Tomorrow will be my day, is what we say in, in the office. And that's how we figure out, at least from the new calls, the new cases that come in, that's how we, we determine who who gets to, to review it and, and start working on it from that perspective. And not that we, it, we're equal partners, and, and we being me being the older brother, I like to say that, that I run the firm, but the reality is that David really is the, the mastermind or the brains behind the firm most of the time. So <laughs> that gives me, I have so many more questions that I'd ask you about that, uh, but I'll just ask you a couple. So, like, when it comes to, uh, like, a, like really, really big cases, I mean, do you, let's say someone calls you, let's say someone calls you and they want you, but it's it's his day, does he get the case or do you get the case? How does that, because these are, I mean, these are real life problems that people face every day, so how does that work? That may be the one rare exception, Tyson. If if somebody happens to call directly for me because they either knew me from way back or they saw something they liked, I don't I don't know. Then I'll take the case. We we really have no there's no jealousies, there's no competition. I mean, there's always brotherly competition. That's why we play racquetball a couple of days a week. But we really just whoever gets that call will take it if in that particular occasion. I think David had our largest case that we've we've ever had. It was a multi-million dollar case. I was ple I was so thrilled for him the way he was able to to handle that. You know those cases are so rare uh, that they ever if you ever see them in your practice. But I I was I was his number one cheerleader the whole way through, and he did such a beautiful job. Uh, there's at the end of the day uh, we're business partners, but more importantly we're brothers, and and we treat it as a, a family business. Bernard, let's talk about one of our mutually favorite Alabama lawyers, Mo Lilienthal. You know, Mo is going to be coming and speaking at the Max Law Con 2018, and I know you're you were one of the first people to sign up for the conference. I just think we're also lucky to know Mo, and I know you and he spent some time together this weekend. Just tell our listeners about all the things Morris is doing and what a what a great lawyer he is. The very best thing that I think I can share about Morris is that he is one of the nicest guys I've ever been around. Lawyer or not lawyer, doesn't doesn't matter. He he really is a true friend. I've known Morris for probably 15 years now. I was fortunate to attend his wedding with he and Shannon uh, many years ago, getting to watch uh, Wyatt play sports. But Morris is such a hard worker. He's such a friend to not just, it, it wouldn't matter if you're the, the lowest guy on the, the social uh, totem pole or the, the top guy, Morris is, he's Morris. And he, he'll do anything for you. He, he will, without question, do whatever is needed for your friendship, to be your lawyer, whatever it may be. But Mo has just figured out, because he's so dedicated to his craft, he has just figured out those things that work for his firm from a social media standpoint, and he's so great at it. He's such a personable guy. What you see with him in his daily tips and in his Mo Show, that's the real deal. There, There is no put-ons by Morris. I was fortunate to spend all of Saturday, this past Saturday with him up in Huntsville. It's only about a 100-mile drive. And we, we did the walk of the March of Dimes for his uh, team, Will, uh, which is so dear and, and near to, to Shannon and, and his hearts uh, and Wyatt's. And then I, we had lunch and went to Wyatt's baseball game. And all through there, you should have seen how many people. He, he interacted with hundreds of people. And I, I was with him the whole time. And it, it, Mo is Mo. And he is just one awesome guy. And I'm lucky and fortunate to call him one of my buddies. And I'm really looking forward for him uh, at the MaxCon conference to be able to share some of his knowledge 
uh, because I know you guys have limited the speakers to, what, 30 or 45, less than an hour per speaker, uh, I know he's going to hit the highlights, but if you want to dig deep in the woods, you're going to have to get with him after, <laughs> afterward to learn some of his, his real tricks. But uh, he, he's he's an awesome guy. Mo really is awesome. He he took, I don't know, about an hour of his time and had a phone call with me, and I was going to try and edit it and post it and, and so everyone could listen to what he shared with me, but unfortunately the audio was terrible because I was on a bus and on a tram and uh, all around. I think I was in Florida at the time. So, but he shared all a bunch of his secrets, and he so he's very very generous at this time. Let me ask you about someone else that, that's near and dear to you, Bernard, your father. Tell me one piece of advice, the biggest piece of advice that that he's given you that's helped you in your career. It is, and I appreciate you asking about Dad uh, Tyson. And this has probably been one of the most important things that he ever shared with with David, Rob, and and me is just be yourself. People can see through that. If you're being someone else, if you're trying to impress, if you're trying to to do something or be someone that you're not, those clients, those friends of the firm, the uh, opposing counsel, the judges, they see through that in a heartbeat. And he said, just just be who you are. Let your personality come out. And that should be, hopefully, enough with all the learning that you have, with who you know, what you know, your street smarts, your, your book smarts. All of that ought to be enough for you to be successful in representing those folks who need it. And uh, it's just always resonated with David and me. And, and hopefully some of that comes out, even in my, my interviews and all the, the stuff that, that's on social media, just trying to be who I am because I, I don't know how to be anything or anyone else. And that's always stuck with us. And that's been probably Dad's best piece of advice that I've I've retained. Bernard, what does your dad think about the social media and all the different ways that you and David are, are promoting the firm as it related to how he used to do it back in the day? <laughs> well, of course, there's always the back in the day comments, but he, he loves it. He's on, on Facebook. He tries to get on Twitter and follow stuff, and he goes to our YouTube channel. And he'll he'll throw in a couple of pieces of advice, and we, we do ask for it from time to time, but he absolutely loves it. He loves the fact that I guess he gets to see us, or me, much more so than David. David is on social media a little bit. He he doesn't do much of the video stuff. But uh, I think that, that like most folks who, who practiced for, I think Dad practiced 45, 46 years. And, of course, back then, uh, even uh, TV and, and billboard, all that was taboo. It was yellow pages or nothing. And it's just evolved that just about anything goes now, and he'll find stuff on on YouTube and, and share with us some very funny lawyer videos and and, and advertisements. But uh, I think he 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 enjoys it. He enjoys seeing it each day and, and talking about it from time to time. All right, Jimmy. Before we get to your hack of the week, I do want to remind everyone. I don't know if I did this last time, so I want to make sure I do. Please go to iTunes or wherever you get your podcast. Gives five star review. The word is spreading, so you all are doing a really, really good job. The Facebook group is growing like it's it's crazy. I think it's more than doubled over the last year, so it's pretty incredible. And keep firing off all the questions and the answers and comments on the page. It's it's incredible how much information you all are sharing. So definitely go on there and join the Facebook group. There's a lot of information going around. Jimmy, you uh, got your hack of the week. I do, but before I get to that, I want to say a couple of things. Number one is everyone really should check out Bernard's show, Nomberg Live, and, and I think it's, it's just a really great way to personalize yourself to, to be seen as something other than just a boring old fuddy-duddy lawyer. And I think that the way Bernard runs his show, I mean, Mitch Jackson and I were talking with Bernard about how he really has a great personality and radio voice. I think he does a really good job of listening, which I think sometimes Tyson, you and I sort of speed past. So, Everyone should check out Bernard's show. Other thing I wanted to bring up was that Max LawCon is quickly approaching. We're getting real close. The conference is May 17th and 18th. We do have some stuff going on the night before. So, you know, I'm assuming a lot of people are coming in on the 16th. So come in the night before. We'll hang out then. So we're going to be real excited to see everybody. And the Hack of the Week is a great book that actually popped up in the Facebook group. It's called The Complete Guide to Law Firm Intake, Powerful Strategies to Maximize Retention and Increase Revenue. 
It's by an attorney named Gary Falkowitz Tyson. I think you should definitely read this before we have Gary on the show. I swung into action as soon as everybody recommended the book last week. I downloaded it on Kindle. I'm about halfway through it, and Gary's agreed to be on the show. We're going to do a Facebook Live with him on May 3rd, I believe. We'll get the word out on that as it approaches. But it is written for personal injury attorneys, but it was very easy for me to translate it into how to do better intake as an immigration lawyer. And I think that so many lawyers spend so much money on getting the phone to ring, but we all do a pretty poor job, but not as good a job as we think that we do on actually conversion. So I think that everybody who listens to this show should read the book, and then hopefully we'll get a good, lively turnout on May 3rd when Gary comes on the show. Yes, Bernard has an excellent radio and podcast voice, and you have an excellent podcast and radio face. So I just want to make sure I just want to make sure I pointed that out. Anyway, <laughs> before I get to my tip of the week, sorry, Jimmy, I had to. You made it easy on me. I'm going to put you in your radio face. <laughs> Bernard, do you have a tip of the week for us? I do. I do, guys. Thank you for asking. Everyone's time is, is precious, in, including those who are calling your office for advice. And I think that listening is the most important thing an attorney can do when he picks up the phone and talks to a client. They just want to be heard, whether it's one minute or 30 minutes, whatever time you can give them, listen. Listen to what they're having to say. Give them some feedback. It's very easy for a lawyer to be doing six things while he's on the phone talking to a, a new client or even a current client. you got to listen, and you got to respond to what they're asking. That's it. I love it. And then something that we we hired a new receptionist a few weeks ago, and she had done something last week that we, we I wanted to make sure that she doesn't do anymore. Is she had just given the number of another attorney because uh, it was a practice area we don't handle, and she just gave the number and said, hey, call such and such. You know, make, make sure you mention us. I said, no, don't do that anymore. What I want you to do is I want you to give the number, say we're going to contact the other attorney, let them know you'll be calling, you, then we, we then call the other attorney, let them know that they're calling. You want to do a warm handoff and, and, and make them feel like, hey, you actually care about me. You're not just sending me off into the wilderness uh, to fend for myself. So uh, I think that's, that's, a, that's a great point, uh, Bernard. I really appreciate it. My tip of the week is actually it has to do with something Bernard was saying. And it, what I would like for everyone to do is if you're not comfortable with video, record one video this week and post it to the Maximum Lawyer group. And that way you can get feedback from us on it, from, from members of the group on, on how you can improve. So just record just a one-minute video on anything you want to do. It could be on a business topic, it could be on a law, law topic, whatever you want to do. Just do one video, short video, post it on the group, and we'll, we'll give you feedback so you can get better. So that is my tip of the week. Bernard, thank you so much for coming on. This is a, a great episode. We've been wanting to get you on for a long time, so we really appreciate coming on. You guys, thank you for inviting me. I've, I've certainly enjoyed it. Thanks, fellas. All right, see you next week. Thanks for listening to the Maximum Lawyer Podcast. The Maximum Lawyer Podcast. To stay in contact with your hosts and to access more content, more content. go to MaximumLawyer.com. Maximum Have a great week and catch you next time.